Hello and welcome to a new episode of Airport CEO here on Bongo Planes, where we continue working on our new project of trying to replicate London City Airport. We will focus a lot on the air side, so that means taxiways, uh, runway entries, but also some of the crucial infrastructure we need to actually operate aircraft here at the airport. Before we get too far into today's video, if you should end up enjoying this video, then don't forget to leave a like, that would be very much appreciated. And of course, if you are new around here, why not hit subscribe? Now, in the last episode, we chose to add a large runway, which is um, not really necessary, given that we won't have any wide body aircraft here at the airport, just as London City in real life can't handle any wide body aircraft. But I just thought the runway looked nicer and kind of better in scale to the airport. So, um, yeah, that's mainly the reason why we chose that. Um, I think what we will go with here is we will actually, even though, um, I mean, you can, you can... <laughs> that you um you had you 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 could you do you you want <laughs> what do i want to say well what i want to say is basically with the large runway you have multiple points as to where different aircraft types will take off um so we will actually build a runway entries so that it could accommodate that but i'm not quite sure if we will actually operate the runway like this or we want to say that aircraft should um always take off from the very beginning of the runway that's basically what they would do at london city because obviously the runway um just about is able to facilitate the aircraft that actually are operating at the airport um but that's a choice we can take later in the last episode i was also talking about my anxiety about having updates in the game and what it means for the game when you're recording it for a series on youtube and of course i knew that there was coming a new alpha update to the game i don't know exactly when it dropped it must have happened just shortly before i actually recorded this gameplay anyway since then we have actually the game has actually been moved into alpha 36 so this what you're seeing here is still alpha 35 gameplay but from the next episode we will be in alpha 36 there have been a few updates to the game um luckily i guess we are very early in the build so there isn't really anything that should be able to break so far so um <laughs> yeah i think my anxiety can relax for a little bit anyway um yeah i mean if you just want to know the, the update 30 the alpha 36 uh, introduces some emergency services um fire station and police and you can do stuff um you can also uh, now check um, um pathways which is i guess very nice because uh, that's sometimes been a bit problematic i haven't tried out these tools yet but i'm sure we will at some point um but this is still alpha 35 um and what we will do here is right now is basically we're adding um the de-icing pads now as far as i actually know in london city aircraft are being de-iced right at the stands but we don't have that option in the game so we will have to add these de-icing stands um so that's obviously a little bit different than real life um it also means that we actually taking up some t some space that i in my head actually was thinking of using for general aviation but i'm sure we will still manage to squeeze some general aviation into there because we definitely also want to have that because we have that at london city in real life as well so let's just figure out where we could place some some general aviation well it's not general aviation; it's small aircraft stands but we will be using those for general aviation um so i think we have a little bit, bit of space here between the de-icing pads and the terminal um this obviously looks a little bit different in real life um <laughs> i realized that but we we have to adjust here and there it won't all be exactly well i guess nothing will be exactly as in london city but we will be inspired by london city let's say it like this um i'm not sure that small aircraft actually um will use the medium de-icing pads so we will add uh, two de-icing pads uh small de-icing pads as well i don't remember if they ever would go to the medium stance but just to avoid any issues um why not just add those here we have the space um so yeah just as in real life, the general aviation part is to the west side of the airport um, or the airfield. Um, this is how it looks in real life. They basically have a tiny little terminal building 
uh, and then they have this little space here in front for private jets. Now, um, one thing that I was thinking of quite a lot is how uh, can we actually get a fine space or how should we arrange um, not just, I mean, we have the, the luggage space, but how do we have everything else? Where do the airport, where does the airport actually store all its equipment? How does that work at London City? Because obviously um, space is at a premium at London City. So I was trying to see if I could find any images, but then I remembered, hey, I actually had a trip report um, that I recorded. I had many trips to and from London City, but apparently I haven't recorded many of them. But I found one of them um, that I actually recorded. And even though it was at night, but we could see the um, front of the building from the air side. So if you take a quick look here, we can see on first floor level, we have these window sections. And that's where you can see actually the um, boarding areas. Um, but then just underneath that you have um, some some areas that are lit up and you can actually see that they have stored equipment in there like air stairs and stuff like that. Now obviously we can't do that um, in the game but I found it really interesting to see how they actually managed to have the equipment close by but in the same way also being able to get uh, rid of the equipment so it is not in the way when they don't need it. You can also see where this differs from what we're building because as I say on first floor level that's where you have the boarding areas and then when people are boarding the aircraft they then basically are let downstairs to ground floor level where they then go out to the airfield and board the aircraft. We are doing it a little bit the other way around because we have people coming from first floor level then going down and waiting on ground floor level when they then board the aircraft they just go out onto the airfield. But the principle is pretty close. But let's quickly speed ramp this because here we can actually really take a close look. Look at this very cool way they have done it here at the airport. A shame we can't completely replicate that, but now at least we know how it is in real life. So let's see how we can do it here at our gameplay. So as we see, we can't really integrate these things um, inside the terminal building as they have done in real life. But we have some space just behind our terminal building and obviously stuff like catering or um, garbage disposal isn't obviously inside the terminal building in London City, that's also somewhere else. So yeah, we will have all these things um, here just behind the terminal. I think what it comes closest to what they have at London City there, what we just saw, is basically the vehicle depots in the game where you are storing your GSE when you are not needing it. Um, and we will also have that just here behind. The same goes, of course, also for fuel depots, although I guess that's, again, quite close to the real life because the fuel depots or fueling stations at London City are also placed on the west side of the airfield. So while we are just uh, working a little bit on that and we'll also add a little bit of decoration, so to say, um, some of these, um, we have ILS the systems and stuff like that. I don't think it's really necessary, but it adds a little bit to the game, so why not? But anyway, while we're doing that, um, I want to bring up something that came up in the last episode. And to be fair, it has actually also been coming up in the previous series. And that's um, people asking me to turn off um, the construction animation. You can do that in the game. So basically, you just, whenever you construct something, it's there immediately. Um, and I haven't really done so in the past because I kind of found it was kind of um, taking away something of the gameplay itself. Um, on the other hand, I do also, also understand that, of course, if we um, construct something and you can see it immediately, then um, it might be nicer for you. Um, so I, I'm not entirely opposed to, to the idea of turning off um, construction animations in the game. On the other hand, as I say, I do feel like it's kind of taking away an element of the game. Um, but I would very much appreciate if you guys have any input on it. Um, let your, your feelings known to that. Uh, what you think about that. Should we do it? Should we not do it? Um, because we could do it. But um, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, as I say, I'm not entirely opposed to it. But I'm also not totally sold on the idea. Um, so if you have any input to that, let me know in the comment section below. Now, um, here at the airport, we have added, I think it's 12 or 13 medium um, uh, medium stands or medium, uh, yeah, medium stands. <laughs> 
I'm a little bit rusty when it comes to the names of all these things. I haven't played the game enough, um, or I haven't played it at all in the time that I didn't record, so you have to bear with me. Um, but anyway, we have about 12, 13 of these stands at the airport. And um, my impression of London City is, is that the majority of traffic coming to London City is coming from abroad, so outside of the UK, and that means it's outside of Schengen. Um, or the UK is out of outside of Schengen, so this is a traffic coming in that needs to go through passport control. So we will have most of these gates as part of the international zone in the game, but we will add um, because the game, we can't really choose what traffic is offered to us, uh, once we sign contracts with uh, airlines, some of these um, um, contract when we sign the contract, some of the flights that are offered will be international. Some of them won't. And we have we have no choice. We have no um, way of influencing how much is coming from uh, yeah, what what is international, and what is not. Um, so we need some stands that are also not international. But I I mean there will also be some internal traffic in in the UK going to London City. Um, so we will have four stands which will remain as non-international just so we can also handle that part of the traffic. But it means the majority of the airport will actually handle international traffic and obviously for that we need to have um, passport controls. Uh, we need to have passport controls for the passengers that are entering so they're outbound and um, we need to have uh, password, passport controls for the passengers that are leaving the airport so inbound. So we start off here on ground level um, because basically passengers will um, yeah, come from the airfield into the terminal and then just come uh, be collected in this area here basically and right after they then leave the um, the passport the international zone and go through the passport controls we will then have them leave the secure zone and then they can pick up their luggage and then we need to sort out a way that we can also uh, guide the passengers coming from the non-international stands and basically coming in just after the passport control so they can also leave the secure zone um, at the same point here and pick up their luggage. So I would imagine that this part of the airport will get rather busy. Um, I will also see if we have time enough, we will also try to um, build the um, the passport control on uh, level one. So basically for all passengers that are going out into the world, um, but I'm not quite sure how much uh, we will manage in this episode because I actually right after recording this, I need to leave and I need to leave on time. Um, so uh, yeah, <laughs> we will see how much, how much we manage in this episode. If we don't manage in this episode, we will just continue in the next. But we have then of course also have the update to Alpha 36. And of course, as always, our passport controls will be a mixture between um, manual control, so with staff, security staff, I guess, and um, and the automated uh, passport checks. Um, I've never figured out if you can just have purely automatic, um, but I don't mind having the, the mix. And in London City, you actually do also have a mix of automated um, passport checking stations and man stations so i guess that's also in a way realistic now as i said i imagine this area could get rather busy but i am fairly confident that we do have enough checkpoints here to handle all the passengers coming in but if it really should end up being a bottleneck then i guess we can expand this part of the building a little bit um to the left here because you know, we have the space um but i'm yeah, I think it should work out, but we will obviously see as soon as we start getting aircraft in. If it's getting completely blocked, then obviously we need to expand it a little bit. Now on ground level, we obviously have the walker later, so we expedite the passengers through the terminal so they can get to the passport control as fast as possible. And we will have the same concept um, on a first floor. So after they have gone through passport controls, um, they have this long, long terminal arm here to go through to their gates, depending, well, long. <laughs> if they have the first gate there, then it's not long, but if they have the terminal, if they have the gate at the very far end, then it's quite a walk. So obviously we also have some escalators, uh, no, escalators. We also have some walkerators here. I really can't speak today. I don't know what it is. Anyway, um, so we will try to really, um, yeah, <laughs> make give, give passengers a good time and um, try to speed the processes up for passengers so that they don't have to spend too much time here at the airport. That's basically also what we have in real life. Although we didn't have, they don't, 
Well, I don't know if they have now. If you have been in London City recently, let me know if they have actually installed uh, war collectors now, because when I was there last time, they actually didn't. Um, but they were also in the middle of refurbishment and expansion, so they might have installed it. Would be really nice if they had so. So the war collectors might not be entirely realistic, but hey, why not make it better than reality? So, um, yeah, I think we pretty much ready here now and first row level to actually build the um, entry into the international zone but when I look at my clock now I have recorded for just about an hour and I actually really need to leave now so we will have to take that up um, in the next episode of Airport CEO coming out next Sunday every Sunday a new episode of Airport CEO here on the channel um, yeah so <laughs> apologies for that but of course we will continue with all of this Anyway, if uh, you have any feedback, any input, anything you want to say to me, then feel free to leave it in the comment section below. It's always very much appreciated. And of course, if you have enjoyed this video, then don't forget to leave a like. That very much helps us out. And if you are new around here, you're always welcome to hit subscribe. Now, with that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you soon again. I'm checking out. And bye. You, you can do so. You, you do. You can. You, you want. You want him to do you so much. You can do anything.